Today I will tell you about games for which there is no available graphic information, so bear with me in this episode. Time Trap. It's a tactical game about time travel. After processing by computer, the results are sent to players by mail, and then responses are entered after receiving the mail. The game can involve 2 to 9 players. Each player has a 16 by 16 square grid. On each turn, players can move their assassins one square in any direction, including diagonally, and take one shot in any direction. The tactical component involves accumulating energy, which remains within active assassins. You can also pass actions by spending energy. Also, with each turn, the cost of actions in energy increases. Moon Base Similar to the previous game, all actions are conducted via postal mail, but the gameplay here is more strategic. You control crawlers that can place different types of mines, stationary, jumping, programmable. You can also control stationary artillery, self-propelled installations, and command posts. The game lasts for a predetermined number of turns, during which you need to accumulate the maximum number of points. Destroying enemy resources earns points, and if yours are destroyed, you lose points. The field consists of 133 hexagonal tiles of two types of terrain, plain or crater. Each new game has a different terrain configuration. Spy beams can be used to determine the tile type. Conquest. The game is a reconstruction of the source code of Empire 1, which in later versions shifted the focus from strategic to tactical gameplay. Here, you manage a planetary economy. Each planet and ship are displayed on the screen, along with information about the economy, population, production, and trade. Ships can be used not only for combat, but also for trade and troop transport. The goal is to plan resource usage to defeat all opponents and become an empire. The Advanced Simulation in Undergraduate Pilot Training Installation, Mainframe. This is one of the first flight simulators in the USA for the Air Force, located in Arizona. It simulated flights on the Cessna T-37. The platform itself operated on six hydraulic platforms simulating overloads and the sense of orientation. Seven displays were used for viewing, and two computers helped process all this information. There was space for an instructor who could input additional data. TV Goalie, Arcade. This is the original version of Pong. The screen was horizontal, and you looked at it from above, not in front of you. Around it, a stadium and cityscape were drawn. The ball doesn't bounce off the edges but returns. The game featured advanced sound effects for that time, including the referee's whistle and crowd noise after a goal was scored. One-on-one, -on -one, arcade. This is a variation of Pong with a basketball theme. Here, you play as players who can hold the ball instead of immediately hitting it. However, you can hold it for no more than 10 seconds. The ball can be stolen on the backcourt. Space War, TRS-80. This is an action game where you move from right to left, which is a rather atypical direction. You earn a point for each enemy destroyed. The game lasts for 60 seconds or until you are destroyed. Wanda, included game. Most likely the first text adventure, released even before Colossal Cave Adventure. Its author is Peter Langston. But in reality, the main goal was to create a tool for interactive art literature, and this adventure was added as an example for inheritance. It was much simpler than Colossal Cave. There was no score counting, and the player simply traveled through rooms and locations with the goal of collecting as many valuable items as possible. It was considered lost for a long time, but in 2015, the author managed to find the source code in his friend's email. Spasm. This game challenges the title of the first first-person shooter. However, the graphics were vector-based. In this game, four teams of eight players each had to win not only in battles but also by skillfully managing resources. The capabilities of such multiplayer were naturally available only on large university computers. Still, in the first version, the emphasis was on battles, and the strategic component was added later. Your team had its own planet, and you had to collectively manage it to prevent rebellion, which significantly reduced resources. The combat system operated at a rate of one frame per second. You could use both phases and torpedoes, as well as adjust the angle. All commands were given through text input of a specific key, 
each responsible for its own action. All games from this release were arcade exclusives, but there is visual information about them on the internet, photos or videos. Wipeout. This version of Pong had quite a few features. To start, it was for four players. Each player started with five lives, and when reaching zero, they were eliminated from the game while others continued to compete. In the center, there was a cross that distorted the trajectory to make the game more unpredictable. However, there were defense zones in the corners from which the balls bounced. If a player was eliminated from the game, the ball also started bouncing off their line. Wild Gunman Following the success of light gun games the previous year, Nintendo continued in the same direction, this time creating a game with live actors. You had to wait for a specific moment when the opponent's eye flashed. In this game, four different episodes appear sequentially if you win the previous one. Super Pong A variation of Pong from Atari, but in this one, you use three paddles simultaneously. Sometimes this allows you to adjust the ball's trajectory if you hit it with the previous paddle, making the trajectory more challenging for the opponent. Hesitation. In this variation of Pong, two to four players can participate. The main feature of the game is a large square in the center, adding more unpredictability to the game. Flim Flam. This is a horizontal version of Pong in arcade machines. The game can be played by two to four players. Here, you can move your paddle across your entire side of the field, not just in two directions. Pressing a button also accelerates the ball's movement. The difficulty level affects the size of the paddle. Challenge A horizontal version of Pong for two or four players. In the four-player mode, you played as a team, with each controlling their paddle from two positions, one closer to the edge and the other farther away. The game went up to 15 points. There was also a single-player mode where you scored points by hitting a narrow area behind a partition. Basketball This is the most original variation of Pong among all listed in this video. It features individual humanoid characters instead of paddles, with each player having two. The game also has a very limited scoring zone that you need to hit. The ball simply bounces off all other surfaces. Sailplane. This is a text simulator for landing a sailplane. You control only the spoilers of the aircraft and appear at a specific altitude and distance from the landing spot. The player specifies the glide ratio from 8 to 23 and the duration. After that, you are given a new position and distance, and you can adjust your actions based on this information. Racer, Speed Race Deluxe, Speed Race. This is an arcade racing game. A very rare guest in those years when various variations of Pong dominated. In this game, there was a scrolling straight track downwards, and your primary goal was to avoid collisions with opponents rather than navigate turns. You were given 90 seconds, and you had to score as many points as possible, awarded for overtaking opponents. The control method was also unconventional, a steering wheel and a lever for changing gears. For video games, this was a rarity for that time. Two difficulty levels were available, increasing the speed and the number of cars on the track. Quack. A game for arcade machines where you tried to shoot ducks using a light gun. The game had fairly good duck sounds. You had three bullets to hit the bird, but after each unsuccessful shot, the duck flew in a different direction. If you hit it, the duck fell down, where a dog was supposed to retrieve it. The screen featured an overlay of reeds, and after each killed duck, a small image of it was displayed at the top. The game lasted for the time set by the arcade owner. ping o -tronic. It was quite a notable item, an Italian game console that included only three games. The company was a well-known manufacturer of household appliances, Zanussi. The first game was Tennis, which was a variation of Pong. The second game was Squash, allowing you to play against yourself. And the third game was Attraction, an endless ball bouncing used for demonstration in stores. In the game, you could adjust the paddle's length. In later versions, they added a slot for a light gun, which was a rarity for Pong consoles. Asteroid Space Wang 2200 The goal of the game is to navigate the spaceship through an asteroid field. 
In addition to moving forward, the player can turn, accelerate, and decelerate. The latter action repeats continuously, requiring careful attention. At the end, the time spent reaching the finish is displayed, providing motivation to improve the result. How the West was 1 plus 3x4 Apple II, Terminal. This is an educational game where you receive three random numbers and the final result. You must perform operations such as addition, multiplication, subtraction, placing in parentheses, etc., to form a correct equation with all these numbers together. The game features visualization in the form of a railroad, indicating the difficulty level. The further you progress, the more challenging the tasks become. There is also an option to take a shortcut on this railroad to get ahead. However, failing to cope with the difficulty level will redirect you backward on this path, leading to easier tasks. Players can compete against both the computer and other players. Star Trader Mainframe, Research Machines 380Z. This is a multiplayer text-based space trading game where you travel between stars and seek profit by buying and selling six resources, uranium, metals, medicines, precious metals, programs, and heavy equipment. You must assess the development level of a planet and determine its most pressing needs. However, the planet's development level is not static and can change in any direction. For example, more distant planets may have more raw resources, making them cheaper, while closer ones are more developed but lack as many raw resources. The game includes a 10 by 10 light years map around the sun. There are also banks in the game where you can deposit your funds with interest. This game inspired developers to create future franchises such as EVE Online, the Wing Commander Privateer series, and the Elite series. Grand Track 10 Arcade. Possibly one of the first racing games, as before, only a space race from Atari was available, and the Odyssey game had two primitive graphics. This game was intended to be the first on arcade machines from Atari, but they ultimately created the much simpler Pong. The game featured advanced controls, including a full steering wheel, pedals, and a gear lever. The top-down view caused the car to brake and spin when reaching the track boundary. An oil spill zone on the track significantly worsened control. The brake slowed rather than stopped, and turning while braking led to skidding. The goal was to complete as many turns as possible within a limited amount of time. Super Star Trek Altair 8800, Mainframe. This is an updated version of Star Trek. The goal of the game remains the same, to destroy Klingon ships within a limited time. Several improvements have been added to the game, including a three-letter text analyzer to determine your actions. Now each quadrant has its own names, and the names of Star Trek are licensed by Paramount Pictures itself. On some computer models, there is text that can be animated. Frog's Mainframe, TI Programmable Calculator, TRS-80. This is a puzzle with a rearrangement of order. Eight frogs are arranged in a row. In each move, the player has the opportunity to jump one frog over another, the jumped frog is removed, or move one frog to the vacant space. The goal is to move all the frogs from the left side to the right or vice versa in the minimum number of moves, not exceeding 24 moves. Tank Arcade. This is an arcade game with a top-down perspective. In this game, two players try to destroy the opponent's tank as many times as possible within the allotted time, usually 60 seconds. The tanks are of two different colors, white and black, and they have projectiles of the same color. Mines are also placed in the central part of the screen, disappearing after an explosion. The tank does not disappear after an explosion but remains in the same place, so it's better to quickly change position after a hit. Control is done using joysticks, which were later adapted for the Atari 2600 home console. Clean Sweep Arcade. A game that is similar to the later released hit Breakout. Here, you also wield a paddle from the bottom and the ball bounces off all walls except the bottom one, hitting which costs you a life. The game can have between 3 to 5 lives. Your goal is to clear the screen of dots, which disappear upon hitting them. Maze War Mainframe, Terminal, Xerox Alto. This is one of the first-person shooters and the first game with a deathmatch mode, meaning it's multiplayer. It was created at the NASA Research Center. You navigate through a maze, 
turn in any direction by 90 degrees, or can go backward. Other players, your opponents, appear as eyeball-shaped entities that can shoot at you. I understand they shoot lasers from their eyes, like Superman. Points are awarded for each kill, and deducted if you get killed. There is an option to peek around corners unnoticed. Pin Pong Arcade. This is a black and white pinball game from the well-known arcade machine manufacturer Atari. It was one of the first video games that simulated pinball. A special ball movement scheme was created and patented. Targets are surrounded by zones that determine the ball's rebound direction. A unique gravity simulation was achieved, realistically simulating the ball's fall for that time. Rebound Arcade. This is a Pong version of volleyball on arcade machines from Atari. The ball's rebound depends on the area of impact on the paddle. The closer to the middle, the more vertically it bounces. Points are scored if the ball lands on the opponent's half, after four bounces from the same paddle, if it hits a partition, or if it bounces to the other side of the opponent. The game goes to 11 or 15 points, depending on the machine settings. If the ball is played without scoring, the partition grows by one level up to 10 times. Teaser Altair 8800, HP Programmable Calculator, Intel 8008, Intel 8080, Kim 1, Mainframe, Motorola 6800, Sol 20, SWTPC 6800, TI Programmable Calculator. This is a 3x3-bit grid puzzle. Due to its simplicity in hardware requirements and solid gameplay foundation, it was ported to numerous platforms. Each bit can be either 1 or 0. You can change 1 to 0, but not the other way around. Changing 1 to 0 will also affect neighboring cells. When making changes in a corner, all adjacent numbers, including diagonally, switch their states. Making a change on one of the four sides alters the entire side. Making a change in the center changes all values except the diagonal. The goal is to have all fields display your symbol except the center.